Hey guys, how you doing? We've been taking a break after the Mustang and uh, so slowed it down a little bit. Enjoyed a little bit of summer. We're back. This guy's got a story for you. Let him talk, I'll be back. Oh, perfect, thanks Dave. Uh, so anyway, yeah, I've been, I've been slowly working on getting Logan's uh, C10 going, or at least get the engine in. So pulled the engine back out again. I had it placed in there and I, I detailed it, uh, changed a few gaskets that needed to be done. Basically just, I didn't do a lot of recording on it because uh, I just wanted to get it done. But, and we've been recording. Yeah, the next, the next one is gonna be this. And I know nothing about that. Dave knows nothing about that. Not yet. Not yet, we're gonna learn. But uh, at least we can get the, uh, the engine back in. We know it goes in because we had it in already, obviously. And then uh, we're gonna get the intake on it, do all the intake gaskets and everything. And uh, yeah, just putts around, keep on going on it. So, so we wanna give you a little walk here just to update you because this is what's gonna be kind of occupying our time. We'll get, you'll get clips of it whenever we feel like doing it. So I'm gonna lift up the truck and this guy's still gonna talk to you. He's awesome. So, sorry about the noise. So like I said earlier in one of our videos that uh, I upgraded the front suspension with an 84 square body. And all it was basically, just, uh, I had to slot, I believe these two holes here, and I had to drill another one on either side. I'll just wait till the noise is done. Yeah, like I say, I'll, uh, I'll probably repeat myself. Everybody's so noisy. Anyway, like I said, 84 square body, uh, front section here. I ended up having to slot, like I said, uh, slot two holes and redrill one. And then basically it just slipped right in there. Uh, this way he's got, and being it's a 69, it only had drum brakes. So now he's got, he's gonna have power, power brakes. I learned that there are so many different styles of calipers for these things. I got inch and a quarter rotors. The first set of calipers I ordered were for uh, a one inch rotor. So obviously they were too small. So got the right ones. Brake lines are correct. Uh, another benefit of having this setup is he gets a sway bar now. And what else is going on here? Uh, fit the rad, obviously it's not in right now, but uh, fit the rad in and I'll show you more about it once it's back in. Put in a transmission cooler. It's an aluminum rad, guys. Yeah, it's a nice aluminum rad actually. It'll help cool it. So we had to make a couple of uh, braces. This guy, this guy, just to fit all this together. And then uh, that's the that's the aluminum unit. That's the one that's going in it, and then we got an electric fan for it, obviously. And another cool thing, um, once we get this thing, we'll, we'll let you guys watch us drop this in here. But uh, just so we'll explain, uh, he figured out how this goes. These, these lines go right to the factory steering box. Right. If you have, I can't remember the exact year cutoff, but uh, the 84 itself, the steering box that is in that front section has the same style of fittings as the LS uh, steering pump. So that was simple. I think, I'm guessing 80. Other than having, off. other than having to notch a frame out a little bit, so the lines go in there nicely. Uh, the inner fender I had to notch a little bit. Yeah. We'll see that when you, once we get this thing uh, sorted out here. Uh, since it's up, our next challenge that we're going to be 
going for is we're going to use the, the stock drive shaft that's there with the hanger bearing. And then we're going to end up uh, shortening uh, the front shaft. So we'll let you know how that works out because we're probably going to video it because that'll be uh, first time shortening a shaft for me. Try so try it anyway. We usually get, uh, get the, the pros doing it, but we're budget build for Logan here. So we're going to use our brains and try and save him some money see yeah. what, and then see what happens. But this thing's all been uh, de-rustified and uh, yep. epoxy painted, and we put uh, five inch, six, six inch, six, six, six in the back. Yeah, six in the back coils. Uh, we did a a shock relocation kit because if you would, if I wouldn't have done this, the the shock would have been in the center of this bracket here, basically. So, so the shock would have been sitting like that. And it, it really had no it's the wrong geometry. Yeah, it, it, it didn't it wasn't gonna work for us. We put uh, an adjustable um, panard panard bar in. Got new brake lines, new brakes obviously the, the diff I've changed it out, it's from a 72 C10, so he's got five bolt front and back. It just makes sense. Uh, new U bolts obviously. I boxed the uh, the trailing arms because these things I've I've heard that they have a tendency to flex so I got a, a one inch or a one foot plate on the bottom and then on the top right in here guys I got another one foot and another one foot up here so that's gonna keep this thing from flexing nice and rigid yeah uh, new bushings but that's without you know they're so many kits out there, they'll do this in round, and they'll also do this in, uh, they'll give you, uh, pardon me, you can buy uh, new trailing arms that are all boxed in and everything like that. Yeah. This puts that much uh, strength back into it by just doing this simple modification. That's easy to do at home. Let's get some plate, grab the welder, and have at her. What else? So um, earlier, like, we never actually posted any of those videos, but Logan and his buddy had come down and they had redid the, this cab corner they did, this box, uh, body support, inner outer rockers, uh, both sides. The, the boys did a really they nice did a job. Really good job on it. I'll go back and see if I can find some uh, clips of these guys doing this and I'll put it together. I managed to be able to use the stock transmission cross member um, all I had to do is I found two holes that matched actually they, the bottom two on the back matched and the top one matched so I just re-drilled these the front ones I had to slot the center just so that the uh, trans mount would would fit in there I don't know if you can see that uh, oops oh yeah there you go so I slotted that uh, once the engine's in then we're gonna Run the brake lines through, <clears throat> like we're good up to this point. Yeah, yeah so it's, uh, oh, another thing, uh, we used the stock square body um, motor, mount. motor mount brackets. The only issue with it was they sat too high. So what we just, what I ended up doing is we just put a, I believe it's like a half inch thick nut as a spacer. It's not gonna crush, obviously, because it's heavy duty. No, and that's all grade eight hardware that's yeah. getting used in here, so super strong. And yeah, and then once we get the engine back in, I'll show you how much pan clearance we have. It worked out okay. The kit that I used for the uh, the mounts, I don't know, it's, it's just a cheapy Amazon kit, but here, let me lift you up here. Let me see what we got. The joys of having a forklift are back in call. So yeah, these are the the plates that I use. They're an adjustable plate. They're not the, what do they call the dirty dingoes or whatever. They're not that. They're just a cheapy Amazon one, which seems to be fine. Not worried about uh, puking out the transmission fluid because I already did that when I pulled it out. Yeah, there's a big pile of sawdust underneath there. So, 
All Hopefully right. it comes, goes back in as easy as it came out. I'm thinking we might put a strap. Yeah, we'll Just see. Level it out a little bit. But. Okay, you guys ready for this? Let's do it. Let's try this out. We'll have to like tilt it. We should probably put it in the center uh, of the intake yeah. deal there. Yeah. If I could get this adjusted, that'd be really cool. All right. There. That'll be easier for it to sneak in there. Motor mount bolts are sitting in the uh, air box. Okay. That's not too bad. Okay. Just talking to the kid at home. Famous last words. Right. 
Yeah, that'll be way better. Okay, let's try that. It's getting pretty tight in here. It's not too bad. You can see that we're actually, we're gonna have to just tip it and then we're gonna get the tail shaft over the, the uh, transmission mount. Doing this one-handed here is tough. I'm, I'm over, Jeff. Okay, so now I'm gonna go down and push it back. Then I'll get the forward one. Yeah, that's now we gotta go down. I'm just trying to get it on that. Okay, hang on. I gotta get it on that booster a little bit here. The booster? Oh, I didn't have the coils or nothing in here either. Sorry for the horrible camera work here. So we're just about to the mount here. Yeah. Mount. So now we're probably coming up on the fan. That's it. Not by much. We're close. Gotta, We're I close. I'm come in a bit more because I can't tip anymore. Okay, we're just going to give her. Yeah. Right. Some inward pressure. Yeah. Okay, we're doing some, some fancy 
see you on the booster here. Can you, uh, can you go down? So that side, that side's jumping in there. And we just gotta pull her back a little bit to get this going here. So I'll just leave you guys there. Okay, let's go down. Watch your head. She's home. Okay, she's home. Good. Yeah. Three point landing. There she be. Didn't break any coils or nothing? No. Excellent. It's no, it wasn't part of it wasn't on the work order today. Alright. So the next thing we do is button that up and we'll uh that's gonna be it for today guys. But uh obviously we'll come back and yeah. keep updating you with what's going on. Waiting on parts, basically for Yeah, life and parts. Yeah, Thunderbird it's, parts are slowly coming in, but not everything. No, so we're uh, doing this. Like, share, subscribe, tell your buddies. Have a great long weekend yeah. for the Canadian boys and girls. And then we will see you next time.